Good afternoon and welcome to Bistex ASEAN Midday Market Watch. Our guest today is Gabriel Yap, Executive Chairman of GCP Global. Now, Gabriel, uh, good afternoon on a Friday afternoon. Good afternoon, Brian. It's end of April. <laughs> yes. Um, now, before we get some of your insights, let's take a look at how markets are performing after record performances overnight. Uh, uh, in, in the US. Now we've got the Bursa Malaysia, which is at 1,602.8. It's down 0.35%. SGX is at 5,993.35. It's down 0.33%. The Nikkei is down 0.73% at 28,842.58. Shanghai Composite is at 3,457.09. It's down 0.51%. Hang Seng is at 28,856.26. It's down 1.53%. ASX 200 is at 7,024.90. It's down 0.81%. Rounding off the numbers, we've got the Kospi, which is down 0.79% at 3,408.41. Gabriel, what's the, your view on the sea of red across the region despite the performance overnight on Wall Street? Well, Brian, as we say, it's the end of April. I think after a very strong month, it's not surprising that some funds are actually just taking profits off the table. In fact, if you go across all spectrum, be it tech, electric vehicle, gaming, technology, China, internet, most of the sectors actually have performed this particular month. Uh, very well, you know, and uh, if you look at even the trend from the first four months of this year, uh, considering the highs of February and then the lows in March, you know, the recovery alone from mid-March till the end of April as of today, in certain sectors is as strong as 30 to 40 percent. So it's not surprising that you're seeing some profit taking on the horizon. Now, the profit taking is happening in, 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 in the background of good PMI numbers out of China, slightly down uh, from uh, 51.9 the previous month, but this morning it came in at 51.1. Japan's manufacturing and PMI numbers were also up uh, and outperformed. Uh, so overall, the story globally seems to be the global recovery story is very much well on track. Uh, yes, Brian, because if you actually look at the three-month averages for both the PMI in Japan and China, uh, as well as the six-month averages, they're actually showing a clear, consistent uptrend, albeit, you know, the magnitude may not be as strong on a command basis, but it's more an aberration. But overall, I think the key trend for investors is that they are pointing upwards, they are pointing towards the recovery that you and I have been talking about since last year. Now, also, the, the other pointers to the global economic recovery story is tech stock earnings. Now, we've got Apple, Facebook, Microsoft, Amazon, and Alphabet reporting stellar numbers over the last few days. Now, the broader tech sector also have reported great numbers. Now, what's your take on this? Do you see the rotation back into tech away from cyclicals as a result of this strong performance? Well, Brian, as you pointed out, the big tech, especially in the US, have had a smashing results. You know, this week alone, essentially, and this is only the second time that the big five, that is actually your fangs, F, uh, Facebook, Alphabet, Apple, um, Microsoft, and, um, and Google were actually reporting uh, in the same particular week. And you can see that beginning of the week, you have Facebook smashing numbers, you know, with an, Tr tremendous turn uh, revenue growth of almost 48%. So revenue was at 26 billion. Can you imagine, Brian? That's yeah. just 26 billion in one quarter. Then you actually have Google coming in, you know, and coming in and smashing you again at 56 billion. That's one quarter numbers, yeah. you know. And then you have Microsoft that came in, you know, at 41.7 billion again for this quarter. Last night or the day before, you actually have Apple hitting 90 billion for the first time in one quarter, Brian. And last night, you actually have Amazon hitting 108 billion again, you know, in just one quarter. So all five uh, um, uh, um, tech stocks, Brian, you know, I think a lot of literature has been written that they are actually the FANG stocks, 
earnings have slowed, they are no longer growth even though they are tech. Now all this is like being thrown out the window because if you just look at the last three years uh, trajectory in terms of the share price. Now all these big five have actually had their share prices gone going up 2.5 times to 300 percent. You know that's a 250 percent to 300 percent gain. You know um, now now all this are tracking on very strong operating tracking numbers. So for example, like Google and Facebook is riding on very strong advert uh, numbers, and you're seeing it through its various multi platforms itself. Whereas for example, the Apple ecosystem is generating the kind of revenue that Warren Buffett is laughing all the way to the bag. And then for listeners who on your program have listened to us, you know, they are obviously laughing to the bank as well. Absolutely. You know, you've been spot on on a number of occasions. One of the things I like about all these earnings is also the fact that these tech companies, their earnings are global. It is diversified. It is not US centric. What that then is confirming is that global recovery story. So we see the statistical and uh, data from the governments saying that, yes, there is a lot of growth, uh, like PM numbers, jobless numbers, and so forth. But the fact that these guys are earning so much money is really pointing to the global consumer spending money and global corporations spending money. Yes, that's right. I mean, for example, Brian, if you take a good look at one of my most multi-decade favorite now, that's actually Microsoft. The trading code is MSFT. Um, in this recent set of results, they actually announced not only contracts from enterprises, new companies, they also announced new contracts from the government, particularly the defense kind of contracts, which they cannot go into the detail. But more yeah. importantly also is that uh, Microsoft is so firing on the Azure background, which is basically the 5G connectivity, which is an area that I have actually been telling all my students of GCP Global, mentioning in our classes, reiterating that 5G is one area that you cannot miss out in terms of your investment uh, choices. In fact, of having uh, 5G stock in your investment portfolio to go for the next uh, uh, for the rest of this decade is imperative for outperformance. Now, Gabriel, I want to bring us closer to home, and we want to talk about DBS earnings, which just announced its earnings this morning: seventy-two percent jump in first quarter earnings. Net profit for first three months end March rose to two point zero one billion from one point one seven billion a year ago completely blowing out uh, analyst forecast from Bloomberg from six different analysts of an average of 1.44 billion. Uh, what is your take on that? And what is your view on their earnings as well as the banks, OCBC and UOB who are basically announcing their earnings next week and a broader Singapore stock exchange as a whole? Well, I would actually say that uh, DBS actually represents a few trends. One is the fact that the recovery from last year's low base comparison is there. Um, the, the very volatile conditions that we saw, you know, since the pandemic uh, recovery have actually a lot of trading opportunities and actually some of the traders within the DBS side, the, the prop desk have actually done pretty well in terms of the trading profit that they have gained. Uh, thirdly, also DBS is also seeing an, a messy of companies coming for um, engaging in their services and that's why you see the commission income as well as the uh, fee, payable fees have actually increased along the tandem. I think going forward, I think um, you are actually going to see a lot of global banks uh, that you know, not the likes of Nomura, who have actually in, been enamored of Archigos uh, or Credit Suisse, you know, but essentially, I think the banks essentially will be supporting many of the family offices, will be actually providing credit lines for a lot of enterprises, uh, will be supporting basically a lot of companies going for IPOs, you know, so uh, be it through SPACs or via not, you are seeing that these banks are playing a supporting role. Now, you are actually seeing the yields coming back in a big way, particularly the Chinese banks like Bank of China, ICBC, so on and so forth. Now, Gabriel, it's always a pleasure having you on the show. Have a good weekend. Good weekend. Thank you, Gabriel. We've been speaking to Gabriel Yap, Executive Chairman of GCP Global on the ASEAN Midday Market Watch. I'm Brian Fernandez. Check out www.biznec.asia for business and technology conversations. Please subscribe and like our Facebook and LinkedIn pages. Thank you for watching.